Welcome back to the channel guys and I hope you all are doing amazingly fine. Well, so I know most of you who follow me on Instagram or uh, who are basically my subscribers are someone who wants to do their CPL in the near future, CPL aspiring, so someone who loves aviation, who wants to know more about commercial pilot uh, license and training. Well, but I also know that most of you have this one doubt or one fear in your head that what if I don't fetch myself a job as an airline pilot? Well, to answer that, I have always said that being an airline pilot after finishing your CPL training is the top tier job. But what if you do not get that right after your training? Well, you have so many other options and I'm just going to talk about one of the best options that you can choose for or opt to be after you finish your CPL. Yes, that's right. And that is about being a flight instructor. So in this video, I'm going to give you a brief explanation and about what are the requirements, what you need to be a AFI or a flight instructor and what does DGCA need as per from the qualifications point of view, medicals and all of that. So if you are someone who's looking for an alternative before you fetch yourself an airline job, well, this is the video for you. Let's get started. Intro. But before we head on to today's video, if you're new around here, my name is Shranj. I make a lot of content with respect to aviation, flying, my daily vlogs, and basically everything with respect to commercial pilot license training in our country. So if you're someone who loves that, well, go hit the subscribe button. Also ring the bell next to it so that you're notified whenever I put the next video on this channel. With that said, let's get started. Now, as I said earlier, all of you, after finishing your CPL, want to fetch yourself an airline job. And I'm sure that one or the other day you will do that. But before that, what? I'm sure that no, none of you, after spending so much money towards your CPL license, want to just sit home and do nothing. Well, so in this video, I'm going to talk about what is one of the best options that you can choose for. And that is becoming a flight instructor. Now, I'm sure that a lot of you also have this question in mind that after spending so much money, why do I end up, why do I be a flight instructor? Well, there are a lot of advantages to it as well. Also, the salary is not really bad. But if you're talking about good part, you also need to know that it is a challenging role to teach someone how to fly when you have just finished your flying training yourself. So for that reason, there are certain requirements that DGCA has put down for you to basically satisfy or clear before you start working as a flight instructor in one of the flying schools. Now, also, if you think that being a commercial pilot is a job of great responsibility, it holds that passion in itself, well, becoming a flight instructor is no less, okay? It is a very respectable position. You're gonna basically mentor so many new aspiring pilots because they are gonna go through you first before they end up being pilots themselves. So yes, it is one job that I would personally love and I myself am an instructor. So I can tell you that it is an amazing job to do. Now let's talk about what are the requirements for you to get EFIR. EFIR stands for Assistant Flight Instructor Rating, which is basically an added privilege that you get on your commercial pilot license for you to start teaching other students and for you to be a flight instructor at one of the flying schools in the country. Now the training syllabus of EFIR basically includes classroom sessions, it involves simulator sessions and then actual flying okay, as an instructor. So now let's talk about the requirements and qualifications that DGCA has laid down for you to get a AFIR on your license. Okay, So I'm just going to read them out so that I don't miss something. The first thing is with respect to your age. You need to be 18 years or above in order to even qualify to get a AFIR. Next is your qualification. Okay, You need to have a valid CPL or ATPL license to get a AFIR rating on. Next is medical. You need to have a class one medical, a valid class one medical issued by DGC, of course, which is also a mandatory requirement for you towards your CPL. So yeah, all that things that your CPL requires is also a requirement for your AFIR. Next, let's talk about what does the syllabus comprise of as per DGC. So I'm just going to read out the points that DGC has given. The written and oral examinations, these basically include techniques of applied instructions, Assessment of students' performance in those subjects in which ground instructions are given. Element of effective teaching, student evaluation and testing, lesson planning, training development programs, use of training aids including flight simulation, training devices as appropriate, analysis and correction of student errors, 
human performance relevant to flight instruction including principles of threat and error management and then finally hazards involved in simulating system failures and malfunctions in the aircraft so this is what uh, the syllabus comprises of so your written and oral exams will have this now when you talk about uh, getting your afir you have to first also apply uh, for your patter flying now what is patter flying as per dgca there are some certain flight requirements flying requirements which basically require minimum 100 hours of pic flying pic is pilot in command or you can say solo flying which you will surely have if you have a cpl cpl also requires 100 hours of pic so this requirement will be met anyways next is something that will not be met during your cpl that is 20 hours of patter flying or instructional flying in this you will be basically sitting on the right seat along with an approved instructor and you will be getting instructions and the instructor will basically teach you on how to teach other students okay so these instructors are uh, approved by dgca and only a certain ftos or flying or fl- flying schools in india approve for you, for you to go and get this training done from now let's say that you get all your flying requirements and you finish your 20 hours of patter then at the time when you apply for your license you also have to clear a viva or an oral exam which is again conducted by dgca personnel the exams are more or less in uh, the same months as you have your cpl exams you can check it up on dgca's website or on pariksha they give you the date of efr so if you have a cpl and if you have fulfilled all of the requirements that i told you till now you can go and apply for the viva if you clear the viva then you go and apply for the afir on your cpl license now at the time of applying there are two more requirements that you need to fulfill which are firstly you need minimum 20 hours of pic flying that is again solo flying within the preceding 18 months okay so 18 months from when you are applying you need to have at least 20 hours of pic and the next one is a skill test by an examiner within preceding 6 months from the date of application so also a skill test is uh, similar to you having a theory exam there is also a flight test which has to be conducted a flight test has also to be conducted before your cpl we have a day check night check and irppc similarly before your uh, in your ifr rating before you apply for it you need to have passed a skill test by an approved dgc examiner which again most of the flying clubs have in india and that has to be within the 6 months from your date of application so yeah if you finish that then you can apply for an afir license if you have cleared the dgc viva cleared your uh, test and all of your requirements are basically tick you can apply you can apply for your afir to dgca once everything is in place you will get that rating on your cpl license or on your atpl license now let's talk about how much time it would take you on a general basis to basically get this uh, afir now usually it takes around 4 uh, weeks so you can say 1 one, one and a half month to the tops now it varies from individual to individual some one might take more time if the flying club you are going to there is some delays in flying or you know the instructor is not available then it might go but more or less 2 months is a reasonable amount of time to get your afir done now let's talk about what is the validity of this license okay now again it the validity of an afir on your cpl license is 12 months after which you can of course renew the license the renewal process is not really very difficult in order to renew the license you should have at least 20 hours of instructional flying in the preceding 12 months okay and along with that you have to again pass a competency check which can be conducted by your own flying club wherever you are working also along with uh, these renewal requirements you also have to basically attend a ground refresher course which is conducted at most of the flying clubs in india this is basically in order to brush up your ground subjects and all of that so every afi flight instructor deputy cfi or even a cfi in india go through this course if you have missed any of the instructions that i just gave you you can also go down to the description i will attach a pdf and a dgca's link as well which uh, gives you all of these requirements properly and you can again refer to them there all right so i guess that uh, helped you but now coming to the main point how much you'll have to pay or what is the cost of getting a afir now afir as i said the 100 hours that you require are already a part of your cpl so you don't have to pay anything extra for that but the extra 20 hours of patter flying that you need to do of course you'll have to pay for that so going on an average base uh, usually the flying rates in most of the flying clubs in india if i take an average 
it sums around 15,000 per hour. Okay, so multiply that by 20, and another whatever instruction or whatever the registration charges or the ground training you have to pay, you can say around four lakhs is a reasonable figure in order for you to get your AFI. Now, yes, you'll have to pay this over whatever you pay for your CPL, but it is worth the cost. I'll tell you why. Once you successfully get the AFI onto your CPL license, after that, surely you're gonna search for a job. Now, at this point, the amount of students that are getting inducted in most of the flying schools in India is skyrocketing, okay? So, of course, they need a lot of flight instructors as well. And as an AFI, you can, of course, apply for all of the flying clubs that are there. Now, some flying clubs, uh, when they hire, they have a certain requirements, but most of them take freshers right out after your graduation or after you get your AFI done. Now, let's talk about how much you're going to get paid. Now, the salaries is basically depend from flying club to flying club. But I will not just stop here. I will tell you what is the minimum that you can expect as a uh, assistant flight instructor well to talk about that in the flying club that i work afi is somewhere up paid somewhere from the 60 to 70 thousand range which is just the basic starting salary some flying clubs do pay less but they give you a contract that maybe a year or a two year contract in which they might sponsor you your flight training or if not sponsor you 100 percent they might at least cut short on the flying rates. So in this way, you save money over there, but you have to compensate in the salary somewhere. If you are sponsoring it all yourself, then you can expect for a salary on a little higher end, but 60,000 is what you would get. Now, I know a lot of you are like, I've already spent 40 lakhs, 35 lakhs for my CPL. I'm, I'm going to spend another 4 lakhs for AFI. Then what am I going to do with the 60,000 salary? Well, that's not it. You're not always going to be a AFI, right? After AFI, there is a proper hierarchy or your uh, ranks keep increasing. After an EFI, you can be an FI. After FI, you can be a deputy CFI. And after deputy CFI, you can be a uh, CFI. And after a CFI, you can also become a designated examiner or an approved examiner or a specific type of aircraft. With that approval comes from the DGCA. Now, not only that, but every single hour that you log with a, flight, with a trainee pilot is under your bed. So you can basically log Whole if you fly one hour, you can log one hour on your license. And that gives you an added advantage when you're basically opting for an airline job. So later on, some airlines, they have a certain requirement of maybe 500 hours of PIC or maybe 600 or 800 hours. That's where you get your place. So there you can basically apply. You'll be above most of the just graduated CPL holders who usually have 200 hours of flight experience. And you'll be above them fetching a job for yourself much sooner. Since we are on the topic of uh, AFI and flight instructor, I'll also tell you what are the salary, what salary you can expect as a FI and what are the requirements for you to qualify as an FI. Now, if I go and talk about all of the requirements, it's basically gonna make this video quite long. So I'll just put up some PDF links down in the description. You can see what are the extra uh, things or requirements that you would require to become, to be promoted from an AFI to a FI, then from a FI to a deputy CFI and then to a CFI, okay? So go check in the description, you'll get all the details. I'll talk about the salaries here, okay? I already told you that AFI somewhere get around 60 to 70,000 plus some added advantages if they fly over their contract hours. Okay, now every AFI has like a certain amount of hours that a flying club wants him to do. If you fly anything more than that, instruction flying, then you get paid more by the hour. So that's something more. FI, on the other hand, once you're promoted, your salary will increase by let's say 20, 30,000. So you can expect a salary range somewhere around 90 to 1 lakh rupees. On the other hand, when you're promoted as a deputy CFI, you will surely be paid as good as a first officer or maybe a senior first officer in most of the airlines. So you can expect a salary somewhere around 1.5 to 2 lakhs. And then further on, when you pro are promoted to a CFI, you can expect 2.5 to 3 lakhs easily at most of the flying clubs in the country. If you're at a really good flying club, one of the reputed ones, you can expect even more. Not only that, but you'll basically be the head of that institute. So you'll have so many people under you and that is a matter of pride. Trust me, it is one of the jobs that you would want to do. And uh, yeah, you'll have to have at least 2,500 hours, I think, before you're promoted to being a CFI. And uh, that is easily achievable in, let's say, a span of three to four years. Let's say five to be on the safer side. So yeah, five years is not a long time for you to fetch that job. 
uh, if you are in an airline you're basically going to get to that uh, point uh, when you become a captain or something and also after that after you gra- are promoted to a cfi you can again get a uh, examinership and if you get an examinership you can also basically uh, take ex- uh, flight test skill test of other pilots and other students so yeah that is one good thing to do so i guess this video help you out i know a lot of you wanted this video on how to become a flight instructor in my next video i'll talk about what are the requirements to become a ground instructor if you want that video go comment down below also tell me how you like this video if there's something i can improve on if there's something which is not right okay also if you loved it go comment down below do not forget to share this video with your friends or anyone who has that fear in their head that what will i do after becoming a cpl holder or if i don't get a job well this is what you will do and uh, i'll see you in the next one till then stay safe do not forget to subscribe do not forget to go and follow my instagram handle and i'll see you in the next one till then stay safe take care stay home and like i always say stay golden bye bye